Good morning, good morning everyone, or good evening to most of you in the US. Let me know if you can see and hear me properly, let me pop out the chat. Second midweek stream in a row. I just want to see how these things go. If, uh, if enough of you guys appreciate it, I'll keep doing it. If not, I'll just stick with the once a week weekend stream. Yes, it's very cold here. We're having one of the coldest winters ever on record. Any regulars? Iron Yuppie. This is going to hurt. Yeah, a lot of newbies here. Welcome, welcome. Okay, let's see how many people we get. If you want to ask a question, guys, uh, make sure on the right-hand side, if you're live on the stream, ask me a question preceded by a whole bunch of emojis. Preceded means with a whole bunch of emojis before your question, just so I can see them and I'll get my, I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, like most of my videos, hey, rocket scientist, hey, how are you? Like most of my videos, what I'm interested in is guys uh, thinking better, like, so they're not on autopilot especially on dates, on relationships, life choices, on their jobs, just going through the same lemming state all the time. And then five, 10, 20 years later saying, I was just in a automatic habit that I just kept doing over and over again because I fit into that habit. I think a lot of times we, we feel frustrated that we shouldn't be doing stuff. We're in lives that we don't like. And we just can't unplug because it's comfortable. We know where we belong. We, we've done it yesterday, even if it didn't feel good, even if it's not going anywhere. And similarly, this question I posed last night, which was, is life better with her or without her? Now, it seems like an elementary question. I think a lot of us, we, we enjoy going deep into the weeds looking at every stitch, all the forensics of our relationship. And it's very interesting. We can uncover some things that we, were, we weren't actually looking at, that were outside of our um, vision, that were in our blind spot when we kind of go in with a magnifying glass. But oftentimes when we're getting close with a magnifying glass and we look at all these different aspects, we lose, we lose sight of the basic facts. Um, the basic facts being, aren't relationships supposed to be fun? And why isn't this? Why does this feel bad? Why does it feel awful? Why does it feel very different from the fun we were having at the start? Am I keeping my mouth shut? Am I afraid of losing her? You know, at the start, yeah, I liked her, she was pretty. But um, I was a bit more open. I was a bit more myself. Now, as I really, really like her or even love her, now I don't want to lose what I love. And it's a natural thing. I mean, why, like if you really value something, you, 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 have, um, you have velvet gloves on. And, you, you know, it's like your favorite, I don't know, favorite thing of it on your shelf, your favorite collector's item. It's behind glass. You're proud of it. You don't throw it around. It's a very natural thing to do. But in putting your relationship behind glass, it's kind of like those parents that, as far as I can see, where, um, hey, smart guy, thanks for the super chat. I really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for dropping in. Uh, it's like the, the kids that, the kids, the parents that uh, don't let their, if their kids fall down, they don't encourage them to pick themselves up. They don't... Um, tell them like you don't tell them they're wonderful all the time uh you give them reality you can you can talk honestly with them you have this real relationship rather than the, than this theatrical superficial one where it's not, it's it's like you're watching a movie it's like everything's wonderful everything's great we avoid all the real subjects that let us know i'm 
do you think I was thinking is this is this something that we feel nervous or it doesn't feel as good as the start because the start was kind kind of freeing yes new but it was kind of freeing and open you're discovering new things and it's not so much that you're bored and you're not discovering new things that you stop being sort of openly honest like the start because it was new it was like oh this is me this is what i say you don't really edit yourself yeah you try and be a bit nice you conduct yourself like um in a civil manner, polite, all of that stuff, you know, the best you you can be, but it's still you. But then when you value this thing and this person and the relationship uh, so much, it becomes, um, it becomes the only thing you're hanging on to. So, yeah, that question, is life better with her or without her? And, and the fundamental microscope over this is why. Asking yourself lots of questions in terms of why. If you feel a different way, and I always say this, guys shouldn't shy away from their feelings because too many of them stoically and toughly say, well, chicks do feelings, we don't. We do logic. But where you feel bad isn't in logic. Logic makes sense. If you banged your knee, it hurts, you know why. Um, you feel good with something in life, you tend to know why. But a lot of times in relationships, there's a lot of obvious stuff that we we convince ourselves not to know why or not look directly at them. Because if we did, it may mean you need to say something, in which case a lot of guys are afraid. Or you may need to face the truth that you aren't compatible. It was just a superficial thrill at the start. So you guys could get together and pop out little versions of yourself. And biology says, thank you very much. And then has no more use for you. You're left with the mess of two incompatible people that uh, started a family that uh, moved in together and now have to kind of go through all the mess of moving out. Um, so compatibility is key for any sort of long term. Now, for you, those of you guys today, hey, da uh, David, how are you, man? Um, and for those of you guys who uh, in, in a boastful way love the pickup culture, good for you. Keep doing it if you like. Um, I'm a long term guy because I like stability. I like knowing tomorrow and next week will be relatively the same. There's, there's enough in life that's unpredictable, that's out of your control. You age, uh, things change. You can't keep things the same. But the more you have in your control, especially in your relationships where you can maintain them, whether they're friendships, family, um, if you have a lover. With a lover especially, because you're around them all the time, you cannot keep your mouth shut. If you do, you can keep your mouth shut. But it'll eventually end and you'll feel worse with someone feeling alone than if you were actually alone. Because what I've noticed in is the periods where I was alone in life, I generally knew where I was. There were certain days here and there that I felt actually lonely. I'm not talking about you know, unknown depression and things like that. I'm talking about when you really know you feel lonely where you could really do with some company and not just kind of catching up with friends, but a romantic partner. You know, there's something about a woman that y your buddies just can't give you, right? That kind of thing. That comes very kind of rarely, not as often. But when you're with someone that you are not compatible with, you're pulling in different directions, you're, you're begrudging roommates that can barely stay together for the kids or you've moved all this stuff into a house and you're embarrassed about saying yes to this, you know, you will feel alone almost a guarantee almost every single day and you will have rare moments of feeling a little bit better. So it's much better to be on your own and have moments of loneliness than constant loneliness sort of, it, you know the best way I can describe in my memory? When I was with 
women who are incompatible with me, which is all of my past relationships. At the start, uh, much of them were good. But later on, you know what it feels like? It fe feels like you haven't slept for two or three days. You feel out of it. You're barely awake. But, it, it, so, but it's not tiredness that you feel. So you feel still feel the zombie state. You're out of it. You're not even here. It's out of body. But instead of tiredness, you just feel sad and lonely. That's what it feels like. Underslept loneliness. That's what it's like when you're with someone who you finally kind of know. Whether you know or not, you feel it. When you, you can't wait to go away from them. When you can't wait to stay at work longer. When you don't want to come home to this second job of your relationship. So this question, I think um, the simple ones can often do us better. We can go into the weeds and look at all the little questions and feel very clever and get online and talk about a million things with the guys. But I think if you pull back and you ask, what's, what's the, if you could describe one thing that bothers you right now. What's, how could you describe in one sentence to the person? How do you feel? Sad. How do you feel? Lonely. And then go to the whys underneath that top question or that revelation, right? Rather than uh, skipping that, which is avoiding the main issue, and then going to the convenient little connections to, as to why. So instead of saying, I'm lonely, or me and her, we're, we're not in love anymore. We're not connected. We, we haven't been for a long time. This was infatuation. Rather than that revelation and directly pointing at it and, and saying it, you sort of say, oh, well, she annoys me. You, you talk about the effects. Oh, she does this. She does that. She annoys me. She never lets me this. I'm tired of this. I can't do this. I can't do that. Why? Go up one. What is leading to it? You wouldn't have all these 20 clever manosphere revelations if you did if you looked at this one thing and adri and ripped this big band-aid off and did something about it so while i'm a fan of philosophy and and thinking uh, deeply thinking about um the th this is what i'm about and this is what helps everyday issues talked about seriously and not avoided now to a lot of people they they might think well human you're talking about uh very pedestrian stuff but a lot of the big stuff the direct questions related to this everyday stuff people avoid and i think if we didn't our lives would be better okay uh any questions uh otherwise i'll go to some of the comments um recently A.T. Quell says, people have lost the ability to be human and original. Human, yes. Uh, I, I think there's too much made of being original. I think if we were honest, we would be original. Everyone's running after being the same and doing what is marketable. You know, you see how many videos you see about like the three ways to blah, blah, blah. So it's the three ways to do it like everyone else or those few people that were honest and it happened to be successful. So I think everyone's trying to do two things at once and that's why they don't feel good. They are trying to stand out and be original and be noticed and be seen in social media to get some sort of validation, but they're doing it in a formalized way. And a formalized way is the way not, not only that works, but that everybody is trying to do because it does work. Don't forget that the, the person, the, the trailblazer, that uh, had courage and then just that just did what they felt like doing in a sensible way. Um, they weren't looking necessarily for approval. They just followed their gut and they and they had a bit of courage to do what was honest. And then we follow them and we think we're being brave. We're doing work, yeah. You can do a lot of work in the direction of somebody else and that's commendable. But I don't, th that term originality, I think there's a lot of bravery before it. It's not just let me do something different. 
uh, let me do something that works in a marketing sense. Again, those kind of things you can't, there's no uh, five step. There might be a direction you can point yourself in, but what you actually do is different. Mr. Absurd, <laughs> just pearly things versus human live stream, no contest. Yeah, one's, one's uh, primarily, uh, she's a, a chick who talks about this kind of stuff in a roundtable podcast kind of thing, isn't she? Okay, let's see what people are saying. X Mars up uh, says many of my friends that act completely different away from their women. I feel bad from them for them. Yeah, this is the thing I was talking about at the start. Are you acting in a way? Are you an autopilot acting in a safe way within your relationship? There's enough times in life where we have to be polite or have to stay within boundaries. Like you go to work, depending on how relaxed or comfortable you feel at work, you might be at a job where you need the money or the money's so good that you're prepared to dress a certain way and act a certain way. And it's worth it because you're conscious about how much you're getting from that job. But if you don't like where you are and you, you, the only thing keeping you there is fear from leaving or talking or being honest, that's the kind of thing that rots people their whole lives and they get to their deathbed and they wish they didn't sort of stay on fear autopilot for the last 20, 30, 40 years. Rocket Scientist says, is it really better or just less stress? I found I had less stress, but I was not happier or having more fun. It's just a, a different life. Yeah. But it's good to ask these things because say if the only thing is less stress, say if there's nothing there, you don't love each other, it's boring. You know, you don't hate each other, you're not fighting. You've got nothing in common. It's just two nice people that uh, are roommates passing each other, ghosting each other all the time. Um, and also, why is there less stress? What was causing the stress? Was it just that those two incompatible roommates that were avoiding each other but too polite to say anything or, you know, too polite for one person to call it out and say, look, I'm going to put my hand up. I'm going to be the one to do it. I'm going to be responsible for pulling the plug. I'm going to be responsible for this conversation, which may or pro and probably, probably will lead to one of two directions. Because when you don't say anything, when you avoid things, you think that you're not responsible. Like we might talk about a lot of women avoiding responsibility, but we do too whenever we keep our mouths shut. I've always said, Think better, learn how to speak your thoughts, and then have the courage to not only speak them, but to, to act upon them if, if necessary. Otherwise, if you think you're not actually making a choice, you're being safe, like I'm not the one that talked about it, I'm not the one that broke up. If you don't make the right choice, if you, as I said, don't do the thing you sh you're afraid to do, but know you should do, you've already made a choice. You're already, already sitting in that sad, uncomfortable, incompatible relationship state or job or life. And you kind of know what it is or you get the feeling of what it is because you know how you can tell? You can tell by, the, by what you're avoiding. What are you doing in your life? Are you not talking to her and avoiding her? There you go. There's the problem. You consciously avoid. What are you avoiding? Are you always going, staying at the office longer? Are you intentionally not wanting to go home soon? Do you feel better driving away from her than toward her? So you, you, I think if we're honest, we know what we're avoiding and we know the source of the problem. And if anything, if you don't know what it is, if you won't speak up about it, if you feel odd in a certain situation like around her or every time you go to work, yeah. Your, your heart rate and, you know, your mood, then you kind of feel where the problem is, but you distract yourself, you avoid it, you ignore it. Yeah, 
Mark L says, sounds like starting a, a new job. Although sometimes with a new job, there's kind of butterflies where you're excited. There's the unknown. But if you, you've been there for a while in a relationship with a woman, you know. You're, you're, you're just going to feel this way for long term. Can you live with it? If you can, keep doing it. I mean, it's not my life. But I think we should stubbornly be honest with ourselves as politely as we can to other people. Don't be rude. And look, I still come across it to this day where I'm not completely 100% sort of courageous and do exactly the right thing. This is why I talk about, and, and we all know, we all know or feel what the right thing to do is and how to act. Sometimes we don't know how, but uh, the, the better we can think and speak, and act on and like make all this stuff applicable because if all this stuff all this manosphere stuff the PUA kind of stuff if it's not applicable if you don't use it if you don't speak it let me give you let me give you the reality guys this is a hobby unless you can implement it into your life unless you speak it unless you live it proudly um, and talk about it and the results of talking and acting and changing certain things and turning the dials it's a hobby don't fool yourself. This is all a hobby. You're having fun. This is a big video game unless you use it in life, unless you can implement it, unless you make some changes and use it. It's a hobby unless it's applicable. A realistic delinquent um, says, nice coat. I haven't worn this in a, in a while. It's a nice sheepskin coat. But um, again, being the, the designer, I wanted to make sure I've, I've got a, a, a lot of dark, warm coats, but I would have been lost in the background. It would have just been a head. <laughs> um, so I wanted to um, have a bit of contrast with the background because it's very early morning. There's no light. And um, I've got artificial lighting. I've got a, a ring light, a RGB light as a, as a kicker. So hopefully it looks somewhat natural. I tell you what, it's a lot better. Oh, look, it's not that it's a lot better, but the changing light of... Um, when I do my weekend streams in sunlight, I do them a bit later, about 11 o'clock. Also, would you guys prefer this time? Or I've asked this before, because my weekend streams, I do about uh, 10.30, 11, which is about three and a half to four hours after the beginning of this stream. So would you guys prefer this midweek? A bit later or is this time fine is this enough time after work but before bed um so let me know in the comments or in in the stream with a thumbs up iron yuppie says at first life is worse without her but over time the d-r-u-g i have to spell the word out uh, wears off and you sober up, especially if it was a bad relationship. Oh, yeah, of course. Then you realize it's it's better without. It's like being in prison. It is. If the person, it, like, if you're not getting abused, it's it's a depressive state. And it's a bit of shame. Like, yeah, I put myself here. I'm too scared to speak up to mummy. I can't say anything bad to the big female archetype in my head it's I think a lot of it is um, we don't want to admit how embarrassed we are we are afraid of saying anything to the female in our lives we, we know like there's not nothing's going to happen but there's something hardwired and I, I think Freud was onto something there. I think it's really connected to your mothers. It's very, very biological. The female archetype is a goddess to most guys. A goddess that you can't make feel bad. That you need to glorify. That you need to deify. So it's a hard one. It's, it's speaking up 
speaking your mind to your goddess where you're not supposed to and it feels like you're not supposed to that's a hard thing once you can overcome that sort of barrier once you have that courage and it's not to be angry or rude it's to sort of be free and liberated that feeling of being in prison in the wrong kind of relationship and wrong kind of life it, it's awful and on the one hand there's one quick band-aid to pull off to get out of that prison and be free get out of Shawshank but on the other hand there is a huge anchor chained to you that's keeping you from moving and saying or uttering any words Mark says, at my age, in my mid-60s, this is not even a valid question. Women offer nothing at this age. Fair enough, Mark. I, I can completely understand. I, I did a poll. And the poll related to this question was, when relationships start to feel bad in your past, did you tolerate it or did you face it? 60-40. A lot of people put up with it. I'll put my hand up and say I did a lot of times in my past. You know, I didn't want to bail too soon because I didn't want it to be an impulse. I didn't want it to be a mood. For me, I know something is true if it's consistent over time. Just like I think, you know, you you lead up to that point where you, you think and you know you love someone and you know why. It's not just how you feel. It's what you've observed over time. But um, after a while also, before you're going to break up, you want to make sure it's consistent for the reasons why you want to break up. So yeah, I put up with it. I'm glad for the honesty. I'm really glad on my channel that I don't want us to uh, overly castigate ourselves, but I also want us to be honest. I put up with it a lot of times. I think if I weighed everything up, I'm in the 60%. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm in the 40%. I put up with it too much and for far longer than I should have. And uh, that's really interesting. How much did you put up with? How much did you live in a place, in a state with someone where you just didn't want to be with them because you, you didn't want to lose what you valued? You put a lot of effort into it, a lot of investment. Uh, you couldn't speak up to mummy you know, figuratively speaking. Asto says, I really found, I rarely found women to be interesting as humans. So it's usually boils down to one thing and that wears off after a while. I think if you can't just enjoy hanging around them, they don't have to be mirrors of you. This is the other thing as well. If you need someone to be a mirror of you, uh, you may be more narcissistic than being, and fair enough, like stay on your own as well as I would, uh, like I would want narcissists to stay away from me and nicer and kinder people. But you might be narcissistically wanting a mirror because you love yourself so much. I'm not saying a woman needs to sort of tick every box in every depth in every interest, but you should be able to have surface level chit chat about the things that you're interested in. So say you're interested in, you know, some kind of science or something, you should be able to talk to her about it on a very surface beginner level in terms of like everyday conversation without getting into the the STEM-based, scientific, university-based subjects that you might be delving into. But at least she can sort of understand and appreciate and wants to talk to you because you're interested in it. So you should be able to talk to her just about what you're interested in, the same way you can talk to a stranger at a coffee shop and explain to them things and uh, talk to them a bit, a bit about who you are and why you're interested in why you... So at least you can be able to hang out with a person with in terms of idle chit-chat and just scratch the surface surface, and enjoy that surface scratching of talking about the things you're interested in, your hobbies and whatever. The problem is 
when you avoid those things, where you compartmentalize and live separate lives, where you can't say anything, where you're incompatible to the point of they're an extrovert, you're an introvert, they want to travel, you want to stay home, uh, you're conscientious, they're lazy, like whatever it might be, there is, everything's pulling you apart in different directions and there is no common ground. If you have to talk about, if you two have to consciously, you realize that you're manufacturing conversation, you're sitting there bored out of your skull and you can't stand it. You want to tear your hair out. And it's like, what am I doing here? And you find yourself talking about, oh, the coffee's nice. Oh, it's going to be hot today. Yeah, it wasn't that hot yesterday. We need to visit John, John and Barbara and blah, 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 blah. And uh, what do you feel? Do you think we should get another blah? blah. Oh, you know what I mean? You're just kind of having, you're having that same kind of office chit chat, polite, agreeable, um, very, very formal. If your relationship is so formal, um, I don't know, like that's the one space you can enjoy life. And there's some guys, they, they have to formalize themselves to go to work. You formalize yourself when you go out in public and please and thank you and you you obey the traffic laws and you know the, the green light, red light, crossing the road, please, thank you, at work. Everything is like procedural. And then you come home and you've got that another procedure rather than, ah, oh, I can say and be myself now. Now, if the only way to do that is to be on your own, do it. But what I'm saying is for those of you guys who still are open to relationships and want women, look for that same thing. And if you can't find it, stay on your own. Uh, a lot of people misinterpret me. A lot of people say I'm encouraging guys to have relationships. I'm not. Find one video where I tell guys to have relationships, where that's what I want you to do. Many guys are inferring that. I'm saying there are guys who want families and kids. And if that's what they truly want, I'm not going to try and convince them out of it. I'm going to point out what they need to be aware of. But if that's what they're going to, what they want to do and nothing's going to stop them, I would rather give them sympathetic encouragement, or not encouragement, but advice and uh, my thoughts on it in a, as polite and caring way as I can so they can try and have the life they want. I mean, this isn't your life, guys. It's every guy that's listening and trying to work this stuff out. And the arrogance of some people that uh, sort of pile on in the comment section or they're very binary. Nah, this is the only way to live. And then they find out why they're frustrated and angry and like almost theatrically powerful, you know, screaming about the right thing to do. It's like you're on stage. You're acting a role that you can't move from. There's no, you can't move. You've decided you're this alpha dude in a three-step program you're going to start a business, go to the gym, looks max, uh, geo max, get a job, whatever you're going to do. And you're going to formalize yourself into this successful guy, both with women and successful um, sort of in parallel to women. And you're always going to be peddling that. Pedal your own bike. X mask up says I've seen all my best friends disappear to their women and I'm the single one out. I don't even want to talk to them because their wives run their lives now and it's not the same. Yeah, I've got a lot of friends like that or I've got a lot of acquaintances that used to be close friends like that. Nico says uh, my married friends always try to set me up or look at me like I'm not happy because I'm single. I'm 40. It's it's the complete opposite. Yeah. They don't understand you. They can't they I think part of them the wives don't like their husbands hanging around with single guys because most of the single guys they kind of look happy. They generally look fitter. Um they got more time. They're wondering what what their single friend is talking about with their husband. So they're worried. So they're always asking you, so are you dating? Like are you like us? And that goes to also show they can't see another point of view. They can only see their bubble of family and kids and stuff. And that's why they tend to bitch about other things and other people and point to things. And that's why they like reality TV. They like feeling better about themselves, their world, by laughing at others. Look how funny, stupid, or ridiculous they are. And as such, I feel more secure about mine. Yeah, 
get all the, the soccer mums together saying how great they are and then they can make fun of other things and prove how great they are. So I don't think they like, um, they, they don't understand that you're happy and you're living a different life. And they also don't want their husbands hanging around a guy who looks happy and calm because he might get ideas and uh, she doesn't want to, her husband talking to a guy who might have different ideas. Current Stump says, My answer is my life is worse without her. Her answer is her life is much better without me. Yeah. Look, man, but what would you want? Someone who's miserable with you and she stays? I, I think I'm very philosophical this way, and I think philosophically things make much more sense, especially to guys when we're being, being real. They're much more fair. If you want, wouldn't want it done to you, don't do it to other people. If you're happy but she's not, and you think she loves you because she won't leave, she's got a sense of sort of shame to leave, that's not a good thing to have someone chained to you like that, to use someone's life. Again, I wouldn't want to be used that way. I wouldn't want to be kept. Triple uh, XXZ says, Yes, I was always walking on eggshells. I will never allow that to happen again. I feel like men love the women while women love the situation. Hmm. I'm feeling like we should get to that point as well. Look, it's it's hardwired. Men just love women right from the get-go. We, especially at puberty, bang, we love them. We just love women for who they are. Yeah, we, we before we know ourselves, before we know language, before we mature, all we know is what we see. And we see women and we love them. We want them. They're like goddesses to us. Uh, women don't see us that way. So... Women don't just love men for being men. Women appreciate men for having done something, achieved something, having a status, uh, feeling safe around them because of what they've achieved. If a man hasn't achieved stuff, like he doesn't feel like he's got enough safety around him. <laughs> Crummy VCR says, dude, I dig the coat. Serious points. Really? Well, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I don't really... I, I don't wear, wear it. Um, I, I rarely wear it. I think this is maybe... I can count... I've had this coat for, I'd say, over 15 years. And I think I've worn it five times in public. Maybe this is the sixth time. And the reason is I don't want to dirty it because it's actual uh, sheepskin. Stoic Monk asks, uh, or says, the past 10 years I have had better conversations with strangers than, I've, than I've had with women I was attracted to. Yes, this is actually interesting. He continues, because I censored myself for fear of saying something to turn her off. That's right. We really value the person we were trying to love or have a relationship in, with or did love at some point, And then we try and kind of keep that state pristine and we don't want to make her frown. Because women don't like being unhappy and you kind of think, oh, no, I don't want to leave. I don't want, to, want her to leave. But if we get used to just being able to laugh at ourselves, being able to sort of see if she can laugh at herself by kind of poking her with a joke and allowing her to poke you with a joke, see if you can be friends. Don't try and be serious relationship partners. I, I would always ra much rather tell uh, suggest to people be friends be friends be friends and everything that friendship entails joking around uh, understanding each other's humor having each other's backs always sort of defer like being the, the reflex is yes to your friend you're able to speak to your friend you're able to hang around with your friend uh, all the time or a lot of the time 
Yeah, but isn't it strange? Again, ask these big questions, very simple questions. Are you happy around the person? Are you feeling miserable? Are you walking on eggshells? Why? And then the follow-up question is why? And a lot of guys don't want to ask that why because it'll lead them down to the honest answer. Triple uh, XX said, said, I would love to have a family someday. However, a family and a marriage shouldn't feel like an or else situation. Yes. That's why I say like if you want to have a family one day, the the most stable upbringing from a family has always been shown to be a two-parent household. And um, the best way for that to, to stay solid, especially today, uh, with all the distractions is probably still marriage. I hate to say it, even with all the dangers of law. And so I'm not going to sort of try and convince this guy, oh, dude, you're an idiot. Don't get married. Don't Like, if that's what you want to do, you want to have kids. The, the best thing I can suggest is take a long time, way past the honeymoon period, before you commit, before you get serious, down the road, before you even talk about moving in together, before you even talk about, you know, if you want marriage, you want kids, all that sort of stuff. Have enough time for the honeymoon period to wear off because people can't keep that going for too long. Unless you're 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 so unlucky that we you're with, with a sociopath where they can wear a mask all the time because that's the way they live. They act through life all the time. But the longer you're with the person, you'll be able to tell why you you don't feel comfortable. You can't look, put it this way, even if they're the best actress, you will not feel good around them, guaranteed. Even if they, they are the best sociopathic actor or actress, you will feel odd. You won't feel good, happy, calm, safe, whatever it might be. You won't feel good like you are looking forward to hanging out with a friend or family members that you enjoy being around. You won't. doesn't matter how good, like you'll, you'll notice something's not right. Uh, remember to hit the like and subscribe, guys, and uh, join the channel at any tier you want. Feel free to do that too. X Mars Up says, guys, we can do everything right and still fail. That means there is something wrong with her. Or... There, there might be still something wrong with your judgment during the honeymoon period. That's why consider the honeymoon period um, like a, a pass. That, that's not the real... For me, I've always looked forward to the honeymoon period ending because that's when the reality of who we are is or isn't there. Don't get off on the honeymoon period and try and keep that. I'd say we... The crux of men sort of... Uh, saying that she's changed or whatever. Yes, women change their mind or whatever. But I think we get too enamored with the honeymoon period where we're getting to know the person. We don't know them. Once you know them, you know what they're about. If you're with someone incompatible and miserable or angry or like whatever it might be you're fighting, that's the real person you're with. That's them. So that's when there's something wrong with her. When you're starting, when you're dating... Most times, if you continue dating, there's very little, if anything, wrong with them. You're you're in you're you're anesthetized. You're drunk on love. So, yeah, everything's right in that. That's why I'm saying, look at it realistically. It's it's not so easy as all the time. You know, we're great, they're bad, but the honeymoon period is usually great for everyone. It's when that wears off being real about the good and the bad then then you decide okay nah not staying here all right now there are a couple of comments under a post I, I put down for members <clears throat> about today's stream. I said, sometimes a simple question clarifies a lot. Like, am I happy with her? And if not, why not? Why has it gotten worse? 
I mean, aren't relationships for the most part supposed to be fun? Otherwise, why not just be on your own without all the heartache and headache or headache and heartache? Let's discuss. Now, some of the comments. Anius137 says, I think this one, this is one aspect that Cooper has really been on target with regarding the importance of being compelling as a man. It's not so much that you have to keep impressing her continuously. It's just that your very life activities are compelling. Okay. You're busy earning a living or whatnot, and she's not along for the ride. She's not your primary emphasis. And I also agree with the notion that as soon as she feels comfortable with you, that's where she gets bored and starts to wander. Look, there's there's a practicality to being more anchored to your life and your hobbies and the things that genuinely give you happiness and not putting all your eggs in her basket, especially at the start, because there's there's a sober quality to doing that, right? Uh, but whichever way you cut it, I don't disagree uh, with what Cooper said here, but whichever whatever way you cut it is realize what that honeymoon period is, the dating period, realize what it is. It's fun. If you commit to the person when it gets serious, if it's a monogamous relationship with when your boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, you decide to move in, whatever you want to do, if she starts being in control and pulling the strings and you're all of a sudden nervous about your life because everything hangs on her now, everything hangs on mummy's approval, you've switched from who you were to somebody else, you're her, her puppet. So do you feel like her puppet or are you still feeling like your autonomous self, especially through this, through your mouth? Do you feel good? Do you feel calm? Does she, does she just enhance your life? Is she the icing on top of your cake or is she the cake? And the hour you can spend in the shed at night once a week, that's, that's your icing. That's as best as you can get. Uh, Neil says, I have a, a little mind game that I play with this concept. I ask myself, would I have coffee with this person? At the start of a relationship, the answer is a powerful yes. As the relationship goes on, I keep asking the question and my experience is that the answer becomes weaker and weaker to the point that I am in a relationship with this person but would not choose to have a coffee with them. That is the point to leave. I love that. That's a really... See, that's a great, simple, this is what I'm talking about. Those simple pedestrian questions, we can get into the science and the, the, the slick moves of dating and what to say and how to conduct yourself and how to duck and move um, as though this is self-defense and martial arts, but a very simple sort of time-honored sort of uh, way of looking at things is would I have a coffee with this person would I say hey babe let's go have a coffee w would I want to hang around with them all the time whatever I want to just feel like doing in a relaxed sense do I want them around me or are they annoying are you feeling like can you give me some space like I want to have some fun without you I want to do this without you I want to do that without you if you only need her for the bedroom or that's the wrong word, not need, but only want her for the bedroom. Uh, Tristan says, life without her is much better, so long as I remember why I left. Yes, I don't regret, I mean, I regret staying like f sort of too long at the end, but I don't regret staying longer than other people say I should have because I want to make sure that I have no regrets later on. And I don't have any regrets with the relationship side. I broke off because I tried and tried and I can sleep at night and I don't want to go back. And, you know, because there's a lot of these cases where people give it another shot. So, um, yeah, remember why you left for those of, uh, those of you who think about going back. Now, in terms of this question that I put up, this poll, did you put up with things or did you try and fix them in relationships? 
436 votes. 40% said they put up with feeling bad and tolerated it. And 60% said they tried to fix it. They faced it and they probably tried to talk about it. That's a lot at 436 votes. Now, what are some of the answers? Okay, I'm going to skim through some of these guys. Uh, every relationship I've, I've had as an adult has left me worse off than before until I learned to stand up for myself and hold boundaries. Now that I have boundaries and communicate assertively, hardly anyone hangs around very long. We live in a very de dependent, needy, and passive world these days. As long as you're you're uh, respectful, um, yeah. If you don't take care of you, there's too many people that want to use you. Uh, there's very uh, people like to throw around, "Oh, human beings are naturally good." They're not, especially in today's times. Take a look at media and how people get off on laughing at other people's pain. Read some of the comment sections, and you'll see how how callous so many people are. And that's most likely, like, there's a good chance that's who Chicky Poo is sitting across from you on a date, but she's on her best behavior because uh, she's decided to join you on a date. And so she wants to act well. She's on a job interview and so are you. TW says, I guess in a way I put up with it whilst trying to fix it. Only when the ships, uh, ship sank and I'd held on underwater until my lungs were bursting, did I swim to the surface and save them, <laughs> save myself? That is a great analogy. I was happily unhappy, trying to mend the burning boat via my efforts and labor, naive and in blissful ignorance. <laughs> I recall hearing a great quote that summed it all up. People will do more to avoid pain than they will to find happiness. Yes. That's definitely why I didn't have the courage to risk the lifeboat out at sea myself. That was brilliantly said, TW. I am going to pin that comment. That was great. <laughs> the ship was sinking. You held on underwater until your lungs were bursting. Only then did you swim to the f surface, barely barely surviving i think that analogy sums up a lot of guys that you know tolerate this and where's this relationship going and a woman yelling at them in public especially and not being able to say or do anything because you can't abuse a woman can't make her feel bad Viking Shark said, I tolerated it because nothing, in quotes, was ever wrong. And she was always fine. <laughs> yeah, what's wrong? Nothing. I'm fine. And I took her at her word and figured it could be fixed once she decided to say what was wrong. Yeah, sometimes we think, well, we asked and they didn't say anything. But most women won't. They'd be, they'll be avoidant. They, they want you to figure it out. They think, well, you're feeling uncomfortable, aren't you? So you feel there's something wrong. I don't have to say it. Yes, you do. You're playing a game. Especially if you're saying nothing's wrong, but there is. If your relationship feels bad, it's probably because it is bad. Yeah, trust your feelings, guys. Trust your instincts. It probably is the way you're feeling for a reason. And you're going to end up fixing it, or more likely, in today's instant gratification and next big thing, dating culture, ending it. I put up with a lot in relationships in my younger days, and I think a lot of that comes from being raised by a single mum with the idea that as long as we can make mama happy, everything in your life will be easier. Yeah, if mama ain't happy, ain't no one happy. Now we have a whole generation, an estimated 40% and growing, of boys born to single mothers who will not have a male influence in their lives or learn how to deal with women beyond what it takes to temporarily placate them. So if the statistics of 40% of men growing up to single mothers. Does this statistic of putting up with it, is that surprising? Is that, is this, is this a revelation? 40% of men grow up in single mother households. So when you feel bad in a relationship, you, you put up with it, you don't say anything to mummy, you feel awful, 
and you can't make her happy. Has this got some correlation, I wonder? That's very interesting. It's very, very interesting. Thanks, uh, Viking Shark. Let me see in the in the stream if there are any questions. August Lyon says, human may be the only one look, who looks forward to the honeymoon phase ending. Seriously, I am. I've never liked it. I, I didn't really enjoy the nervousness of dating. Um, it's, it's kind of, you know, like the newness of it is interesting and it's fun. But I kind of know that I don't like being in that state because that's not where I want to be. It's... It's like if you go out looking for a car, it's fun going to the dealerships, but really what I want to enjoy is having the car at home and enjoying it in my life and having it in my life and loving it in my life. So there's this kind of holiday mode uh, that I realize is kind of, okay, I can take it for what it is. This is a fun short-term period, but what I really want this to lead to, what it should be leading to, is what I really want, which is a life where I live. So um, I never liked looking for houses when I was looking to buy my house many years ago. I never liked looking for cars. It's, yeah, it's, it's fun in a frivolous way, but I know what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to fall in love with a car. Not trying to, but I'm trying to find that car that's for me that I might fall in love with, that house that's for me, that person while I'm dating that's for me. So yeah, it, it wasn't even, it was kind of a secondary tertiary thing that was leading to what I really wanted. Because uh, I know it's not real, you know what I mean? Um, I don't know if it's just my brain, but I, I've always been very aware of, yeah, I know what this is and what it isn't. This is polite dancing. I. I want that relationship that, uh, you know, where you're in your t-shirt and track pants on the couch, waking up in the morning, brushing your teeth uh, without the suit of armor on. That's what I want. And the dating phase isn't that. That's you liking each other and, and trying to impress each other and showing up as the best version and, and the most polite and formal version of yourself. But hopefully that armor disappears. And then you can start to really love the person in t-shirt and track pants you know the girl without makeup on the imperfect person uh, there's too much perfect optimism at the start and for me it wasn't i always realize it's not where I, that's not where life is that's the screensaver donna hello memento mori hello Realistic Delinquent says, uh, your point about wishing to take mundane topics seriously flows very well into your wishing to help men take good commitment, make good commitment decisions. It's so mundane, effectively universal, but tough. Yeah, this is what I like a lot of these kind of drive by commenters on my channel that say, oh, human, you're still talking about the same old topics. Everyone likes to talk about very esoteric, um, complicated world building society altering topics and and um trends and things where they're interesting they can be informative but the pedestrian stuff that people say oh that's just kind of every day but how often do we avoid fine tuning and perfecting our every day the way we speak what we want where we live where our routines and habits lie and we think that the answers are over the horizon 10 steps away from where we are all the answers that keep the hygiene of your life stable your base level Maslow is all around you. How you speak, think, what you choose, and your your daily and weekly habits, where you spend your time, uh, what you say yes and no to, how you stand up for yourself. They might be boring to most people because they think, what? Well, well, oh, duh, human. Of course, it's like, yeah. How many of you do it? Oh no, I'm I'm focused on hypergamy. I know that stuff. Yeah, good for you. I'm pretty sure that pops up consciously like in the front of your head and it's applicable like when you're talking to someone there's too many people that are avoiding the the normal human topics and speaking about them intelligently and maturely 
inform yourself with all that. Yes, I did. Be well read. Know a lot of the academic stuff. But as I said before, unless you can implement this in your daily life, and especially how you speak in your daily life to other people, it's a hobby. Don't fool yourself. If you can't apply this to your everyday life and speak about it in your everyday life, it's a hobby. It is. It's a video game. It's a hobby. I don't care. Like, again, you do you, but my life is better because I make this applicable and I take everyday subjects seriously because they are important. They're the things that I'm stepping in every day. They're my routines. They're my relationships. Smart Guy says, Marriage relinquishes all control, especially financial control, to the woman. No sane person would agree to this. Until the divorce laws change, marriage is too risky for most of us. Again, what are, what are the guy who wants to have kids? What do you say to him? I would rather say, go about it the right way. I know the laws are the way they are, but if what you want out of life, and life will not satisfy even a bit, no matter what business you start, no matter how much money you make, no matter what you replace kids with, it won't satisfy. If I really want a boat, 500 supercars does not satisfy. Do you know what I mean? If you want a specific thing, if you know that will give your life like real ultimate meaning, you, know, you will love living in that space. That's what you feel like you were built for. Then there are time-tested ways to do it. And unfortunately, it's marriage um, because it's uh, at least there's a level of security kind of like there's a lot of red tape and a lot of heartache to break it apart and it's for the kids to keep them stable if you want to have kids so again if you don't care about what kind of women you're choosing in your life what kind of job you have what kind of life you you, you structure for yourself and you just rely on the law punishing you if accidents happen and like if if I don't care what I'm choosing, I can, I think I mentioned this in a few videos recently. If I don't take seriously what I'm choosing and how I'm going about life, and you know, judging a person on a date and getting to know them over time, if I can trust them, if I don't care about the level to which I can trust them because I think all women are the same, then basically I don't care who I'm with. I don't care who I'm I'm trying to. Uh, I, I don't care about valuing anyone. I don't have any standards. I'm relying on the law to give me the standards to make my life good. So if it doesn't work out properly, it's all women. It's the law. It's everything. Everything and anything except your choice. Things can still go wrong. But the more you make a conscious choice, the less likely it is to go wrong. Especially if you if someone who wants kids take a long, long time, man before you even consider committing to or moving in with her. I'm talking years. Because that mask can't last forever. And if even if she does, you will notice what it's like to live with this person. Do you feel uneasy? Do you feel like you're walking on eggshells? Do they have this temper? Do you, do you find parts of conversation that you avoid because you don't want them to blow up in certain ways? Even if they try and keep the mask on, after a few months, like no one can keep it on and you will notice... If, if you're a switched on person, you will notice you feel, you will feel odd around them. Even if you can't point to something, it's like something's odd and you need to keep consistently um, being aware of that and seeing if it disappears or you can find out what it is and, or through conversation, you can reveal it. If it was great at the start and it made you commit to them and then after the honeymoon peri period is gone, there's something that's popping up there's this ghost that's popping up and you don't know what it is. Is it you? Is it them? One size fits all about people. Look, if you don't know them, yes. The point is, get to know them. 
we can't sort of sit there and say, oh, women don't care about the guy. They just care about what the guy can do for them. So we want the woman to value us. But if we don't care about who we're choosing, we don't really value them either. But And it's also for us. It's mostly for us that you know what you're valuing. If you don't care about what woman you're picking, what she's like, then why do you, it's kind of rich expecting her to value you for really noble reasons. If you don't have the nobility to choose uh, something with your eyes open, you make the choice, then... um. Yeah, the, the law can only do so much. And as we see, the law is completely on women's side. But again, what do I say to the guy who wants kids? I'm not going to tell him to live a monk lifestyle if he's going to be mis miserable. There are monk guys who love their lifestyle. But if you can sort of see, and they will tell you, like, I don't want to live that life. I want the opposite life. Okay, what's the healthiest way for them to get that? That's the, that's the thing. Nomad Hitch, thank you very much for the donation. His super chat is, a comment is, two and a half years together, six month breakup point today after getting dumped. Sorry to hear that, man. It's hard for me to say, may have been a chameleon, but life was better. Yeah, during the honeymoon phase, it's that kind of interview process. It's the probation period of a job. What can you do if someone's lying, man? Because this is the dichotomy. You want to be, you want to believe in what you're seeing and hearing, and maybe they do too. Uh, they and um. But if someone lies, what can you do if they're internally, if they're acting? Because the only way to see if you can trust someone is to sort of trust them incrementally, give them a bit of rope, and more rope. And but if they choose to keep the mask on and stay there passively like a lot of women tend to do. And I always say this, not to blame women, but most women say passive, especially if they like the guy and they like the and the guy does all the talking. He asks them out, he's talkative, he makes them feel safe through his conversation, his laughter, blah blah blah. So he's always forward leaning, talking, showing, exposing so she can observe and see the real guy as much as she can sort of discern and then she feels safe and then she comes out of her shell. So she needs to be made to feel safe first. Whereas they don't care if a guy feels safe. Guy has to risk, talk, take her out, impress her, basically get the yes from her. Um, so yeah, that mask can stay on for quite a while. So it's up to you, your own life, because you don't want to waste your life. It's not about giving women anything or it's about not wasting your time and being genuine. And, uh, Speaking and not keeping your mouth shut. Yeah, smart guy says wanting the car is more pleasant than having the car. I've said before, like, I love the idea of having a motorbike. I really do. But I don't like the practicality. And uh, where I live... Most places I need to go, I need to get on the freeway. A motorbike would be nice for the weekend, but I'm a very practical person. It's not just the cost, it'd go to waste, but also you're a safer motorcycle rider the more you ride. If you're just a weekend motorcycle rider, it is much more risky. But also the more you're on the road, the higher chances are. Because I think the stats are something like if uh, you're a motorcycle rider, you've been riding for more than 10 years. Something like, I don't know, there's a really high percentage of people that have had injuries, uh, have passed away, um, they're debilitated, they can't ride anymore, they've had accidents, things like that. So you have to consistently ride all the time to be a safer rider, but then, then, then the more you ride, your chances exponentially go up in terms of having an accident. If you don't ride enough, you're an unsafer rider, and then also your chances of having an accident go up because of your your fault mainly. This is what I've heard and read and, and after t talking to a lot of guys. But I, I love motorbikes.
Yeah, Tomb of Arminius says, a good car acquired with a genuine purpose adds to your life. Falling in love? How about building love? Yes, if you're consciously deciding on why you love something, I think that's one of the best ways to sort of do it with women or with things. Realize that you like, oh, this thing really impresses me. I love being around this person or this thing. Um, but then you actually, if you're, if you're practically building it, if you've got a nice sense of practical common sense, like I'm, I'm dating practically in terms of like, I'm keeping an eye on what doesn't work, what doesn't, I'm, I'm keeping an eye on compatibilities, virtues, not just how I'm feeling. So you're balancing feelings with logic. And those things are dancing well together and they keep moving in the right direction. That's the thing to aim for. Elusive Man says, good morning at 12.59 a.m. human. Uh, where are you, Elusive Man? Yeah, Donna says the topics are different if you listen to the conversation. What are you talking about there, Donna? Uh, in terms of the topics are different if you li listen to the conversation. Uh, Dragon Root says you're not alone, human. It makes sense to me to look forward to the end of the honeymoon period. Granted that my partner looks forward to it as well. Hmm? Morning, Adam Super AC. How are you? I haven't heard from you in a while. Tomb of Armenia says, Human makes good points, but he misses the wider social, socio political situation in his conversations. I don't have much interest in politics. I'm interested in the proximal part of your life. Like, there's only so much I can be interested in over the horizon politics and stuff because by the time they affect your life, and I think it goes a long way to people. When, I, when I'm around people that are, you know, talking of the latest app on their phone and um, uh, what Elon Musk is doing and the you know, uh, geopolitical stuff and how this domino can fall in on this domino and this will happen in five years and stuff. I, I get the chess mindset of men to f find that interesting and it is interesting, but the bulk of what makes your life good, stable, comfortable is uh, the stuff that people avoid talking about because they think it's too boring. I, I, I miss the wider socio-political situation because maybe they're not applicable to my life directly because I kind of live a very simple life. I don't find politics interesting. I, I just don't. If it's directly applicable to my life now, yeah. Um, but... Yeah, I think from what I've 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 seen with a, with many guys that I really can't have long conversations with, or in depth ones, is that they're so focused, ten steps ahead to politics to the big picture. I consider the big picture, but I'm a small picture. My world, that's my big picture. And then I sort of cherry pick and, and I'm informed by the big, big picture. Because I, I don't have that much authority over the big picture. I think it makes people feel good that they're tackling something huge. Uh, but if you ignore your life, your proximal life, I, I think that's where a lot of your problems can, can happen. Especially because a lot of women, they care about this little bubble while men care about the world. And then if you're in a relationship where you take your eyes off this and you don't care about the conversation here with Chicky Poo, if she's all women and you're 
there dealing with po like all women, politics, geopolitics, all that sort of stuff. Conveniently, men ruin where their lives are, where they live and breathe because they're so focused over the horizon. Women aren't. They're focused here. So say what you will about how women, a, a lot of unintelligent women are just sort of concerned with their feelings and they live in the moment and they ruin things because they live in the moment, how they feel and they just play musical chairs. At least their feelings are here. Men's feelings are often too much over there and they let uh, where they live rot and go to hell. Uh, Feral Android says, uh, there was nothing my ex, in my ex that would have raised the red flag that she would walk out on me after living with her three years. Things were awesome. But what are you supposed to do as well, uh, Feral? Are you not supposed to trust where you are? Like if you've got a friend, if you've got a lover and you can't f see anything wrong, you feel great. Are you always going to be pessimistic? and suspicious and thinking like, yeah, yeah, sure, I feel good, but you're always glass half empty. Sometimes that glass half empty can start to make them feel like that's the red flag they're seeing. You're always closed. You're always treating her like all women, no matter what she does. So you can add to, to so, so you, if there's, if there's nothing telling you you can't trust the person to a reasonable degree, why not? Because doing that may l make your life better with them. Of course, you can't you can't tell what's going to happen later. She could leave you. Smart guy says a man who wants kids will be devastated if those kids are taken away in a divorce, and he still has to pay for them. And the risk of that happening is still too high for many of us. Yep, I, I understand. But what's better? I know that a lot of those guys, if you ask them after they've been through a divorce, they'll say, I love my kids, but I wish I'd never met her. I know. But also before they had kids, they're just kind of walking around like a zombie, just waiting for the grave and they don't like their life because they just want that one thing. So what can you really do? I'm not going to be responsible for someone else's life. You have to do what you feel compelled to do. But if you do it in the most eyes wide open way, I think that's the best thing you can do. George says, I think the value system has been destroyed. Hmm. Let me go back to some of the comments. Remember guys, if you want to leave a comment on the stream, on the right, uh, put a whole bunch of emojis before your question. Otherwise I can't tell if they're questions or not. David P says, I've done both and neither worked. After a lot of reflection, listening to and learning from people like human, I, I feel I now have the tools to build a more solid foundation to a relationship if I choose to have one. Yes, if you choose to have one. Having that sovereignty, that's that's a big thing. When you have that so sovereignty of choices, your yeses, your noes, then there's a, a much more eyes wide open as much as you can. Again, I, I, I can't help if someone's lying and is a really, really good actress. But as much as you're conscious, consciously making sovereign choices, standing on principle and you and you can see them clearly you can see see clearly what you're doing what you're choosing what you're saying what you're accepting what you're rejecting um i think that's a better way to live it's a more confident and self-assured way to live he says i i feel i now have the tools to build blah blah, blah more foundation to a relationship if i choose to have one i learned to share my wants needs and boundaries up front i learned to speak up for myself advocate for myself and walk away if we aren't aligned yes 
Jennifer says, I allowed physical attraction to get in the way of common sense. So I ignored what was obvious for from day one and hoped as he got older, he'd slow down. Never happened. Uh, this happens to guys too. We sort of go, ah, yeah, but I'm hoping for this. I'm hoping for change. and But you kind of know it won't. If the person's not who you want them to be in the future at the start, uh, hoping that they'll change after you're in love is as dumb as when people sort of say, we've got a bad relationship, but if we have kids, maybe that will magically make our relationship even better. Uh, she continues, I removed myself mentally, allowed the ship to sink, uh, waiting on him to catch up to where I was. See, keeping your mouth shut wasn't the right thing to do. He finally asked for a divorce. I agreed. I left, been single ever since. I'm not bragging about being single, but so far it's a good fit. Yeah, but um, staying passive and quiet is not good for anyone. You just waste your life. I don't care what gender, gender you are. I learned that if you don't like how things are going, you don't have to put up with it. Sure, easier said than done. And I'm talking from experience too. You should speak up and set boundaries that will work in favor of whether relationships continue. See, we all know the right thing to do and say. When we're on our own, when we're on screen, when uh, Chicky Poo's not in our face, uh, we know what the right thing is. It's the, the courage to be able to start speaking these things and knowing how to talk, knowing how to say that to a person, articulate it properly, politely, civilly. I'm always saying like learn how to think and speak better because it can really save you in situations where you really need to say yes and no. Otherwise you shut your mouth because you're too afraid. If you know you can speak well, it makes it much easier to always set your boundaries, especially verbally, no matter who's in front of you. Uh, Black Cream said similar to, um, to David. He said, to be honest, I tried both. Neither worked. 10-year relationship, broken dishes, broken TV, and she's apologized for her behavior once. I'm happy that I didn't get married. Uh, Danielle says, I tried to make it work. Now I see it was a mis my mistake. I tried to be the man and describe a uh, man she described she wants. On the flip side, she did not care for my needs once or how her demands affected me. It was a struggle for months. In the end, I broke up with her. Hmm. Uh, JRD W says biggest mistake men make is not saying no and turning their back on their chosen narcissist sooner or at all that guy Pete you refused to invite to gatherings he said I put up with it lesson learned don't <laughs> Yeah. Again, we all know what the right thing to do is. If we're soberly in a conversation talking about the ideas, we know what the right thing to do is. In practice, that's the challenge. If you can do it in practice, oh, that's a beautiful circle. That's real sovereignty. You know, I said what I think. I mean, you could be wrong. I, I could know more in 10 years. I hope I do. Actually, the older you get, the less you know. Um, but you know what I mean? It's kind of like the, the more you, you can apply your principles, the better it is. Red P I L L E D biker said, I tried to fix it. Then I tolerated it. Then I left it. Yeah, it seems like uh, everyone's have had the same or similar experiences. Yeah, when they tr show their true colors, leave. Yep, s still 60-40. Out of 472 votes. Did you put up and tolerate a bad relationship or did you face it?
Yeah, I can see both. I kept quiet with the majority and I tried to fix it, but then again, did you completely? Did you tiptoe around the subject? Hmm. George T says, back in the days, if you got married and you end up in a divorce, the society does not look on you. Yeah, it wasn't looked on very kind, very well. Elusive Man says, I would be a great father, but husbandry is not something that is valued beyond its utility. Yeah. Tomb of Armini says, I understand with your limitations in socio-political, we all have limited time and interest. It's not a criticism, just an observation. Yeah, no worries, man. I wasn't getting annoyed. I just, um, you, I get some people that sort of uh, say that I'm, I'm all, I'm avoiding it. I, I just don't have any interest. It's, it's, I don't see it's direct application. I can chit chat on the surface for a bit, but not much. I'm a pedestrian when it comes to uh, geopolitics and um, a lot of political subjects. If it can be re related to um, sort of more personal social uh, social stuff, uh, yeah, I'm interested more there. Uh, a more interesting and applicable conversation can be had there. Aeneas137 says, I'm beginning to believe that marriage and kids is for young people who don't know any better. Eyes wide shut. Do you think it's even possible in middle age at this point in our society? I'd say... I would say the, the older you are, I'd hope you're wiser, especially if, we're talk, if you're talking like this and you're interested in these topics and you want to be as well-rounded and um, learn from your mistakes and uh, think more deeply and philosophically about things. I'd say the chances of you having a better relationship, whether it's platonic, romantic, whether you want to get married or whether you don't, whether you want to have kids or don't. I think if you're doing it more realistically and with these kind of conversations, I think you'll, you'll be able to do it better, whatever you want to do. Uh, but I don't think the answer is regressing to an even more scared child like if you're going back to the womb the older you get i think you should be going the other way and i'm, to I'm talking in terms of safety that sort of avoidance any more questions guys let's start uh, heading for the finish line we've been going for an hour and a half now Let's, um, yep. Okay. <laughs> A lot of, um, uh, comments on last week's post of what kind of woman would you prefer? Obedient or agreeable? 25%. Well, I'll just show it. Why don't I just show it, human? What kind of woman would you prefer? Obedient or agreeable? Out of 1.7 thousand, uh, 17,000 votes, 25% obedient, 75% agreeable. I know there was a lot of discussion under the video between like the semantics of agreeable compared to obedient. I mean, I don't want to get into a, like a semantic discussion of like, uh, d you know, a university debate, like, you know, this is defined as blah, blah, blah. Um, I know there's probably a better word than agreeable, but just off the top of my head and, and from some of the, the comments under the, the video. An agreeable woman compared to a disagreeable woman. Like I'm, a, I'm an agreeable guy, but I don't just say yes to everything. But that's very different to an obedient, an obedient person compared to a, what would be the opposite to Obedient. A shunt. Um, I don't know. Hmm. 
an obstreperous a-hole. Um, anyway. All right. All right, guys. Any last questions? Let's wrap it up. And uh, like, subscribe. Uh, join and become a member of the channel at whatever tier you feel like. Um... Ah, Vera says, too, mi too much demands for what I could offer. That's why, like, be very discerning. And I'm not saying have high standards, have your standards. My standards aren't high, but they're very, very specific. I'm a, a, a very simple guy. I don't have extravagant standards that are so high that it's it's kind of ridiculously high. It's, it's guaranteed to make me single or live a lonely, miserable life because uh, my standards are fantasy-based, like a lot of women who sort of want the, the top 1% of men. And those a lot of those women are the bottom 10% of women. All right, guys. Let's wrap it up. I got up in freezing cold for you guys. You know what? I accidentally set my alarm to get up before the stream. But I didn't realize the volume was on mute because I set it on mute while I was doing something earlier in the evening before I went to bed. And so I just happened to get up and I checked the time. And it was five minutes after I'd set it to wake up. Luckily, my spidey sense was tingling. And that's another, that's another benefit of going to bed regularly. When I used to be more of a night owl, I had very little control when I, was, when I fell asleep, why I was insomniac, um... Whereas now, like I, I've kind my body's used to the clockwork. Even without an alarm, I'm getting up roughly at the the same time if I go to bed at a certain time, at normal hours. So if I go to bed at a normal kind of hour, like ten o'clock, eleven o'clock, I get up, you know, six ish somewhere around there. Whereas when I was just going to bed like two, three in the morning, sometimes four, sometimes I couldn't go to sleep. Sometimes I would sleep. 10 hours, sometimes I would only sleep six. It would be all over the shape, uh, shop. So anyway, guys, um, thanks for tuning in midweek. Let me know below in the comment section if you still want me to do midweek streams or if you'd rather not, we have a few people uh, show up, a few regulars and a few newbies. But um, anyway, I'll see you on this week's in this weekend stream and hopefully I'll be able to shoot you another regular video uh, before this weekend stream. Next stream on Sunday morning, regular time, I'd say it would be about 10.30, 11 my time. So I'll see you then. And remember guys, aren't relationships meant to be fun? And if they're not, don't have them. Don't have them. Uh, anyway, I'll, I'll catch you guys later. Have a good week weekend. <laughs> um, anyway, I, I won't say any more. All right. Bye.